Stephanie of Stephanie Stitches here. Welcome to my channel where together we sew. If you're brand new here, thank you so much for coming by. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and ring the bell for notifications so you'll know when I go live or post videos like this one. If you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. I love seeing you all here and your comments down below. Today I've got something a little bit different for you. Uh, I get asked all the time, how do you get so much done? How do you sew so quickly? And so um, I've told people here and there things that I do to get things done quicker, uh, products that I use, but I decided to do one big video so I can show you the things that I like that you might not know about that help me get things done quicker, like making binding strips, making half square triangles, all those kind of things. So here are my top seven tools or things that I found to help me save time or be more accurate and or both. So here I have the first thing that I wanted to show you. Number seven, the Binding Ease by Quilted Hearts. So this is a tool that helps save me time um, and make binding a lot faster. So what you do is you take a binding strip, fold this in half, stick it through this little silicone thing here, give that a little press to get it started, and then push it through the other one, the other side. And then to make your binding a lot quicker, all you have to do is keep your iron right on your fabric and you can use a, this is actually meant for a bigger iron. I'm just using my mini iron right here to demo. But you just fold as it comes through this side with this hand. And then pull it through underneath your iron. Keep your iron down. Make sure that this silicone pad is on an ironing board or something that won't go through to the table or whatever you're working on below it. As you can see over here, it's making my binding. And I didn't know that I needed this in my life until I saw it at a quilt show, decided to give it a try at the quilt show, came home and did my qu first quilt with it. And now I will never go back to making binding any other way. Look how fast you can iron your binding strips. Amazing, right? So that is number seven on my tips for, and this one is for saving time, Binding Ease by Quilted Hearts. And I will put the link for this in the description box below. Okay, so my top quilting tools, number six, this item is for accuracy. My favorite thing to use to make my fabric a little bit stiffer but not using starch is Best Press. Best Press is an amazing product. It makes your fabric stiffer, gives a little more body, but without starching. Um, I was always taught, and I know there's a lot of people who starch out there. If you love to starch, starch please. But I was always taught not to starch, um, and that came from my grandmother who was a garment sewer because um, I was always told that it attracts bugs. Now I know there's lots of people who say they starch all the time and that's never been a problem. So don't listen to me as far as that goes. <laughs> that's just what was ingrained in me. And so I've never been able to starch, even though I've tried to pick up a bottle, I just couldn't do it. But then I found Best Press. I love, love, love Best Press. Um, it makes your piecing so much more accurate because your pieces, when you cut them, come out so much better because it makes your fabric stiff. Now. One tip when it comes to best press. Here I have a two and a half inch square. Let me get my ruler and I'll show you guys. So that's two and a half right there. See, two and a half inch square. I had a friend recently who is a very good quilter and she was getting very upset because she was piecing a traditional quilt, traditionally pieced quilt. And that's reflecting off the light, sorry. And she was saying to me, I can't understand sewn everything correctly, quarter inch seam, 
and my blocks are wonky they're not lining up they're all the different sizes and um, I didn't know what to tell her so I was watching what she was doing and I realized that she was using best press but she did not best press her fabric and iron it before she cut it she was putting her blocks together and then spraying it so I've already cut this guy to two and a half inches so y'all probably know where I'm going with this best press starch water seam any of those things with an iron is going to shrink your fabric right so as I was watching her and I didn't say anything to her because I did not want to insult her. She's been a quilter for a really, really long time. Um, I was realizing that she was best pressing after she was making her blocks. So it was making her blocks go wonky because it does shrink your fabric. And as you can see, or maybe you can see, maybe you can't, probably not because it's very, very close. It is now, this block is about an eighth of an inch smaller than what it was previously and so if you had that for every single quilt block of course your blocks aren't going to match up and your quilt is not going to come together the way you want to so tip for best press is make sure that you best press before you cut don't do it after you've already put your block together okay so my next time saving tip um, since so many of you have asked uh, is bobbins this looks like a lot of bobbins this is not everything i have as you can see i've got some missing spaces here i had some packed for my last retreat and for when i go to quilt guilds um, so i definitely have more bobbins than this and that's just for one machine <laughs> i have different bobbins these are larger than a standard bobbin for this machine that i sew with every day I have smaller bobbins for my regular standard machine. I've got bobbins for my long arm, which are M class. They're a lot bigger than this. Um, so my tip is lots of bobbins. The way to get going faster, as you have all asked, how do I get so much done? Is when you start every project, make sure you have plenty of thread wound. Um, nothing is more frustrating when you think you're almost done and I've done this because I've done it on lives before, run out of thread and not have a bobbin ready to go. So usually when I start every project and I try to have bobbins um, wound ahead of time. So I have my neutrals, I have black, I have a row of gray, and I've got a row of white. I use the same thread all the time. I always use Aurifil thread. You don't have to use Aurifil, you can use whatever thread you like. But the colors in the thread that you like the best, I suggest that you wind those ahead of time or if you like pre-wound bobbins, get neutrals, but pick neutral colors that go with almost every project. So that's why I have a white and I have a dove gray and I've got a black because I know that almost every quilt project that these will work for, at least for the piecing. These ones that are up here, the colors that I've got wound, I've used those for small projects that I free motion quilted on this machine um, for top stitching or for the quilting, um, not for piecing. I don't ever match my thread color to whatever I'm piecing. I use a neutral color. So I'll use gray or white or black. So that's my tip for um, saving a little bit of time there. Okay, tip number four to save time um, is when you're making half square triangles, at least small ones, using diagonal seam tape. This diagonal seam tape is from a company called Cluck Cluck Sew. So it is one of my favorite notions ever. It's like washi tape, so it's not sticky, it won't leave residue, and I absolutely love it. I always keep a roll in my drawer right here in my sewing desk um, to replace when this wears out, which I'll tell you I've only replaced it twice in the last year. Um, just because the edges would get a little bit of raggedy, um, but it really lasts a really long time. So this roll is gonna last me quite a while. I've got two rolls. I got one in a subscription box at some point and I bought a roll because I couldn't find that roll and then I found that roll. So now I have two rolls and I'm quite sure this is gonna last me a real long time. And I use this on all my sewing machines. So all my sewing machines have this tape on it 
and I still have this much left. So this is gonna last a really long time. It doesn't cost that much, it's around $5. I carry this in my shop. But what I love about it and why it's such a time saver is because with the diagonal seam tape, for small enough squares, now it's not gonna be true for all squares, you're gonna be able to eliminate the step of having to draw a line corner to corner when you're making half square triangles. Because the tape, the center line, the red, right here, if you can see where my finger is, and also on here, the red, you line that up right where your needle comes down. So what I did is I lined my tape all the way up here, put my needle in the down position, and then um, stuck the tape back this way and ripped it off right in front of the feed dogs. So it also has these two black lines on it, which are a quarter inch. So that gives you your quarter inch seam allowance on either side of the red line. So all you have to do is to make a half square triangle is line the point up here on that red line, put that right under your needle. And now because these, these squares are small enough, these are two and a half inch squares, I can see the red line down here on this part of my machine because I wrap the tape down around the front of my machine and I can line the end point up on that line. So I just sew right on that red line. I keep that point on the red line all the way to my needle. And there you go. You've got a half square triangle or the starting of a half square triangle um, without needing to draw lines. So there's a bunch of quilt patterns out there where you need, you know, a hundred of these size half square triangles. So drawing all those lines takes a lot of time. So this to me is a time saver. So I really love the diagonal seam tape for this reason. So that was tip number four. Stay tuned for tip number three. Tip number three is about accuracy, not necessarily time. So we just talked about the diagonal seam tape, but there are cases where your half square triangles or anything else that you're working on that you need to mark are gonna be too large to use the diagonal seam tape. So then you're gonna need some kind of marking tool. Now, I know that there's a lot of controversy with the friction pens, but the friction pen is my favorite marking tool. If you don't like the friction pen, that's okay. There's water soluble markers out there. There's air soluble markers out there. There's chalk markers. There's all kinds of things. I personally like the friction pens. I like them because First of all, I'm drawing on the back of a hair square triangle. So I'm gonna sew on either side of this line and I'm gonna be cutting this off. So I'll, I won't have a problem with having pen on my quilt. Second, it does come off. I've heard people say, well, what if it doesn't come off? Or it comes off, but it comes back in cold weather. I live in Ohio. It gets cold, it gets hot. I have lots of quilts. I've never had it show up again because once you iron this off and you finish your quilt and you wash your quilt, once you wash your quilt, it doesn't come back. I don't know if those folks that says it come back had washed their quilt or not, but I've never had the markings come back. That being said, I've tried every color because these come in a rainbow of colors. I typically only use the black or the purple. I had had one time where red left ghost marks or white marks on colored fabric. And, um, Luckily it was on the back side, but the red is the only one I've had an issue with. But I love the friction pen for accuracy because now I don't have to guess where I'm sewing. I'm just gonna go a quarter inch to this side and a quarter inch to that side. And the diagonal seam tape comes in handy because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this line that I just drew on the black quarter inch line and then I'm gonna sew right on that red line. Same thing when I flip it over and do the other side. So between the diagonal seam tape and the friction pen, you get a super accurate half square triangle. And the beauty of the friction pen, or what I like about it, is all you have to do is iron and it's gone. Love it. So that is my accuracy tip for tip number three. My next tip is another accuracy tip. Um, I get questions all the time, like how do you get your blocks so perfect? How do you, I really, don't if I didn't have these tools. 
this next tool is something that once I found it, I can't quilt without it. <laughs> this is the Acorn Easy Press Precision Piecing System. This is the pressing pen and this is the liquid that goes inside. If you watch my channel at all, this is what we lovingly call magic juice. It's easy press fabric treatment. <laughs> and you put this in the pen. You open the end of the pen, open the liquid and add some liquid to the pen. Now make sure you don't, there's grooves in here that this end screws into. Make sure you don't go higher than the grooves because liquid will come out the end of the pen. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Let's see, that lid went flying somewhere. I'll get it after. Okay, and then you take the pen and you press down a few times, three or four the first time you use it, and you add the juice to the seam that you sewed. And this is an added step that I like to do, but you, it's not necessary. Um, I like to finger press my piece in the direction that it's going, and then give it a press with the iron. You just hold it there for a few seconds until it dries, and you've got a super flat block. If you guys can see that, look how flat it is. I mean, there's no bulk in it whatsoever. I love how flat the Magic Juice gets the blocks. It's great. This has changed the way my quilts come out. All my seams match up a lot better. The flatter your blocks are, the better your quilt top comes together when you put all your blocks together. I just absolutely love this Magic Juice. <laughs> So I had to share this with you. So this is one of my tips for accuracy. Okay, so my number one tip for a time-saving and for super accurate quilt blocks is to have a good machine that you really understand. My sewing machine is my baby. I love her. Um, and I recommend to any quilter out there, if you can afford it, because I know everybody's budget is different, that you look into getting a straight stitch machine. If all you do is quilt, you don't need a machine with all the fancy bells and whistles. If you want to get things done and get them done quickly, like I do, because this video is all about accuracy and time saving tips, as a lot of you have asked me how I get things done so quickly, I recommend a straight stitch machine. They're starting to make them. Almost every company has one now. I know that Brother has one, Baby Lock has one, Juki has one. I believe Singer actually has one now as well. I could be wrong about that one, but lots of companies are coming out with a straight stitch machine because they're realizing that quilters don't necessarily need or want all the decorative stitches. I have another machine that has all the decorative stitches, can do buttonholes, can do zigzag, all those things. I am primarily a quilter. So this straight stitch machine is the love of my life. <laughs> Not really. My husband is the love of my life. But I couldn't do what I do without this machine. This machine has pinpoint accuracy. This machine is stitches 1600 stitches per minute, which is the fastest machine on the market, on the domestic machine market. <laughs> so I absolutely love her. I can get a lot done and I can get it done quickly. I highly recommend this machine if any of you are interested. It is a Janome 1600 PQC. But like I said, if you're not a Janome person, Brother makes a machine, Baby Lock makes a machine, Juki makes a machine, and I believe Singer, not positive, so don't quote me on the Singer, but I thought I heard that they now make a straight stitch machine, and I'm sure other companies will follow suit because that seems to be what quilters want and what people are asking for. So all these other machines, or all these other companies started jumping on the bandwagon after Janome made theirs and people were saying, oh, I want a straight stitch machine. It is a all mechanical machine, no thrills. There is a needle up down, an independent bobbin winder, a thread cutter, but that's it. <laughs> Nothing fancy. There's no computer in this machine. It just stitches fast. But this is 
my number one tool for accuracy and speed. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, all these products that I have that I showed you, I will link down below, um, including the binding ease. I love this. Um, this is probably, this is a newer product to the market. It's been on the market for about a little less than a year. Um, you can't really find this too many places, so I'm going to link to you uh, Quilted Hearts website directly to this product if you're interested. I don't like to push products on people. I don't like to tell you what to get, but I do like to share what I find something great and this is pretty great. So I definitely recommend this. You see how fast I made that binding strip. Um, so that's great. Uh, best press you can find at any local shop, um, Joanne Fabrics. Um, I don't usually recommend them for most things, but they definitely have Best Press and they carry it usually in the gallon or the bigger size. So if you're a super user of Best Press like I am, it's probably your best bet. Uh, friction pens are pretty common. You can find these all over the place. Any place that carries pens carries friction pens. And for quilters, I like the clickable kind. There's kinds that have caps, but as you know, we lose caps. <laughs> I mean... I dropped the precision piecing cap and it took me a minute to find it when I moved my machine. So I like the clickable kind. So that's the kind I recommend, but get whatever you like. The diagonal seam tape I have in my shop because I love, love, love this product and I don't sell anything I don't love. So I carry this in my shop and the precision piecing system. I carry these in my shop as well. I have the pen and the liquid come together and I also have the liquid refills. And every now and again, you do have to replace your tip your pen, I've had this, if you guys can see, this is the newer label from the brand, the green. This white, which is practically worn off, is their original label, which I've had this pen for about seven years. I have to, you have to change the tip, which you just take it out, put a new tip in um, every now and again. But I probably change this maybe twice a year, and I quilt a lot. I make three to five quilts a month. So, and I use this for every single quilt and that doesn't include just blocks I make on lives or things like that. So I sew a lot. Um, so these pens hold up really, really well. The label wears down, <laughs> but I don't care about the label. Um, but this is so good. If you haven't tried it, give it a try. If you hate it, you can blame me, <laughs> but I absolutely love it. And of course, um, Having lots of bobbins, like I said before, really, really helps your productivity because they're already all wound. You could just pull it out, stick it in your machine, keep going. Um, there's too many times where I haven't done that and I've really regretted it because then it slows you down. You got to take the time. And, you know, especially if um, my machine, I'm very lucky, has the dual spool holder. So I have one to sew with and one to do my bobbin. But when I'm using like my other machine, that doesn't do that and I have to take my thread out of the needle and the thread path and put it over to the bobbin. It takes time and it's a little frustrating. So I def definitely recommend winding a bunch of bobbins ahead of time or using the pre-wound bobbins if you like those. I don't care for them myself, but that doesn't mean that they're not good or that you out there don't or wouldn't like them. And then my number one tip of course again is my sewing machine. I love my sewing machine. You do not have to go spend the money on a straight stitch machine. If you are a serious culture like me, I do recommend it. Um, I would go try one out at your local sewing shop that has machines if you are interested at all. Um, obviously, I don't work for any sewing machine company, so this is just my recommendation, a straight stitch machine. But if you don't have the money, it's not in your budget, or you don't quilt as much as I do, um, just make sure the machine that you do have you know it really, really well. You know where that quarter inch is if you don't use diagonal seam tape, which by the way has changed my piecing game. I had a quarter inch foot. It was never exactly a quarter inch. It was a little bit bigger or the fabric would slip under it and I wouldn't notice. Um, so nothing ever came out perfect until I started using that diagonal seam tape. Another good use for that is that you get that perfect quarter inch as long as you put that needle right through the red center line. Um, so that has also helped my PC game. So that's just a few tips. I hope I helped you a little bit. I know there's a lot of new quilters out there in the last couple of years. So if I can help just one person, I'm happy to do so. 
All right, everybody. Well, I hope you have a wonderful week. I will see you soon for um, another UFO update, and then we'll keep on sewing my uh, autumn chill pattern on Saturdays with Steph. So I will see you all really soon. Take care and have a great week. Bye.